Hello. Welcome to the Yale School of Management MBA for Executives alumni panel. I'm Clara Hansen with the class of 2018, and my role today is to moderate a panel that will explore themes related to those who are interested in expanding leadership, their professional capacity, and personal development through a graduate business school program. Let's face it, many women today want to pursue a graduate education, but find it very difficult to visualize themselves achieving the goal. So today we will hear from several women who seriously and thoughtfully considered this aspiration and turned it into a reality. Learn how they planned, how they pursued, and prepared along with managing many commitments to successfully complete the graduate program while they were working full time. In today's session, we will highlight themes such as coming to a decision about taking that next step, including timing and the application process, managing multiple priorities and commitments, such as family and career, navigating workplace leadership issues, and maneuvering as priorities conflict. And also, we'll take a step back and consider the overall impact of the business education that you've received, and not only talk about the curriculum itself, but also the impact on the community. So let's get started. So thank you all for joining us today. Thanks for having thank us. You. Thank you. And given that you're all so busy, it's a double thanks. So please introduce yourselves now, and then we'll get started. I'm Lauren Hines. I'm a proud graduate of the class of 2019. I am the VP of Corporate Social Responsibility at NBC Universal. And during my time here, I specialized in the sustainability track. So hello, everyone. My name is Tiana Redis. I'm also the part of uh, EMBA program uh, for 2019. Uh, right now, I'm working for Mitsubishi Tanabe uh, Pharma uh, as Associate Director for the Business Development and I'm in the cohort of healthcare. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Claudine Littman. I am the CEO and founder of Gender on Design and Innovation. Uh, I am also part of the class of 2019 and my focus was in healthcare. Great, well thank you. So let's get started. Uh, Claudine, let's, and then we'll do, uh, go to Tinley and then to Lauren. Tell us what was it about the Yale for Executive uh, Yale MBA for Executives program that inspired you decision to apply? And then also, what did you anticipate the impact of the program to be? Um, I think uh, the whole process or, you know, started with the idea that I really wanted to bring healthcare and design together. Um, and I think for a long time, I just didn't know really how to go about it. Um, and I did a really short summer program with an organization called AIGA. Uh, and it's uh, an organization that focuses on the design community and kind of, you know, does different conferences for the, for the community and, and so on. Uh, and it has been partner, partnering with Yale to do this summer program, which, which is a five-day kind of like short, intense mini MBA program, if you will. Um, so I did that. I loved it. Kind of got hooked on the idea of, you know, learning more about financials, you know, econs. Obviously, like the faculty was great during that, uh, that five days. Uh, and I could really visualize myself in the context of, you know, doing a program like that. Um, and there was a lot of things in that five days that really kind of made me feel like design had a space in business, especially within the Yale community. Um, so that took a while. Uh, I probably took a year really to just think about, you know, how could I do that? Sure. Um, I met with, a, you know, one of the faculty member here with a professor to kind of just like, you know, again, get a better sense of, you know, is my vision making sense? And then I learned that the EMB program offered a healthcare track. So, so for me, I guess, you know, when you think about impact and, and what I thought I could get out of the program, uh, was not only the business acumen and just becoming a better leader by having the tools and the methods to, you know, to do my job in, in a better way, uh, but also to gain a, a ton of, you know, healthcare acumen sure. because of the concentration and being able to hear from people like, you know, Tini, who are, you know, experts in a certain field uh, and really learn the challenges uh, that the healthcare space is facing today. So for me, it was sort of like the double aspect of business and healthcare. Excellent. What about you? So... 
uh, as I said, I'm working for a pharmaceutical company, but in the business development group. So my major responsibility is trying to find uh, like a potential drug in the pipeline. We're trying to evaluate its value, analyze its risk, and quantify the you know, total value. And if it's good, we find this, we can license in the, the asset, and our, you know, we, we can do the emerging acquisition, our investment. So I was trained as a, a scientist for years. So I worked uh, in, the, in, in the scientific group, uh, group for academic uh, institution and also for industry. Uh, when I started to you know, work in this BD in position, I realized my scientific training is really helpful. I'm very confident. However, when I get to the position, like uh, the, you know, I have to quantify the value. I feel like I'm really short of uh, lack of uh, knowledge. That is the starting point when I think you know, maybe I need to get a, get some education in the economic and the business side. And uh, years ago, I think uh, Yale Management School had a, hold, held a business conference. Actually, it's called U.S.-China Opportunity in Healthcare. And my company was invited to give special uh, several speeches. And I, I was one of the panelists. And that's the first time, actually, I got into the, the, this building. Very excited. I was surprised, you know. So the, and the business school has this uh, focus on the healthcare. And then, then I started to learn about this program. I know there is a cohort for the healthcare. So it's very, I think, uh, smoothly I make this decision to apply. Great. What about you, Lauren? So I've worked in the corporate social responsibility space for about 12 years, mm -hmm. uh, and always in corporate America. And I think sometimes there's a misperception around the work that we do. I think mm -hmm. that more traditional business leaders view it as the nice thing to do and, mm -hmm. and think it's all philanthropy. And so I thought going through an MBA program would give me the, the tools, the skills, and frankly, the vocabulary to communicate mm -hmm. why there are business drivers to the work that we do. Sure. Um, so that kind of sparked my interest. And then as I was exploring schools, I was so drawn to Yale's mission of creating leaders mm -hmm. for business and society because mm -hmm. it aligns with my values and I think those two things go hand in hand. Um, I really like the idea of coming to New Haven every mm -hmm. weekend and, mm -hmm. and being in an environment free from my daily distractions. I live sure. just outside of New York and there are a number of great programs in New York as well, but I wanted this to feel different from my day to day. Um, and then last but not least, I really was attracted to the size of the cohort. We're, we're not a, a very mm -hmm. big class. And there are programs that have hundreds of mm -hmm. executives in it. And I thought that being in a, a group of this size would really allow mm -hmm. me to forge deep, meaningful relationships with other students. Um, and it did that and so much more. And you know, I came here to sharpen the business acumen. Right. And um, I would say I got a lot more out of it than I ever anticipated. Wow. That's a great start um, to this conversation. So we've just heard about some of the considerations that go into uh, thinking about applying to a program uh, and, uh, and what goes into, into your thinking. So let's talk about now, Tinley and Lauren, what about um, once you receive the acceptance letter and that wonderful phone call that we all got, uh, what was going through your mind and um, what made it the right time for you to say yes to this opportunity? There's no turning back now <laughs> after having applied and gone through the process and, and taking the, the standardized test and so forth. Look, I, I don't think that there's ever a, a right time, um, but I just knew it intuitively that, that you know, I got into this amazing program and I was fortunate enough to get into this amazing institution mm -hmm. and I'd be foolish to, to sure. not accept the, the sure. offer. So um, I, I still remember that night, that actually afternoon, I received a phone call from 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was actually attending a conference. I was very excited. And actually, I got, a, I think, a message. And then I said, I will call, call back. Um, I think at that time, I'm pretty sure already I, I want to you know, go through this program. But you know, just to get in the offer uh, till you actually decide to really go, there mm -hmm. are a lot of uh, Actually, barrier uh, convince the you know convince still con continue to convince the family, sure. convince the the boss, and the plan for you know other things like family coordinate the family you know and also financially. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just the start. I was like, hmm, am I ready? Uh, but um, I feel like okay, uh, let's see. Like if this mean to be, <laughs> so let's just uh, conquer one barrier after another, and uh, you know just I don't just want to you know. Go, go small step and uh, step by step. Yeah. 
Yeah, everything that you've just said really points to the, you know, the incredible focus, the intention, and the sacrifice that goes into making a decision. Uh, now, Claudine, uh, Lauren, why don't you tell us about what were other commitments that were going on in your lives while you were in the program, and how were you able to manage it? And, um, and what sacrifices did you expect, and perhaps maybe something you didn't expect? Yeah, um, I mean, I, you know, it's probably the case for all of us, knowing, you know, you guys and, and, you know, what our lives look like. But, you know, obviously it's, you know, the professional commitments and, you know, the personal commitments. So we all have families. Um, so you, you kind of put that all in consideration when you, when you do accept and decide to move forward with the program. Um, I think the one word that did come to mind when, you know, I was thinking about, you know, how did I, how did we really get through it? And I think all of us found different ways to partner with different people in our environment, in our ecosystem. Sure. So, I, you know, my, my husband, Brian, was definitely, you know, my, you know, partner in crime when it came to making sure that the family, you know, was taken care of and he was kind of managing the day-to-day -day over the, really the two year uh, that we were here. Um, and, you know, work was a little bit of the same, right? You find your peers and your employees that you can rely on, uh, you communicate, you prioritize. Um, and, you know, little. I think the, the first couple months were perhaps a bit of a shock and it takes a while to just adapt, uh, but you find your ways. Um, and, and actually it turned out to be great opportunities, I think, for the people I did partner with because I was probably forced me to delegate a little bit more, um, to look at prioritizing things differently. Um, so it, it kind of became a positive thing, but it took a while. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. You know, when I applied to the program, I had a three-year-old boy and a six-month-old boy, a full-time job for which I commuted every day to Manhattan. Sure. Um, and I travel occasionally, and I thought time is not something I have. How in the world will I integrate this program into my life? Um, and it's hard, but you yeah. do it. You figure it out. And like Claudine said, you rely on your networks, your strong networks, your partners. You know, you're blessed to have a good partner to help you with your family or good childcare. You, yeah. you, you figure it out. Um, again, I, you know, it's not easy. If it were easy, I think everyone could do it, right? Um, but it's not easy. And, and I think that, you know, you, you learn how to prioritize better, as you were mm -hmm. saying. I think, you know, you learn how to become more efficient. And right. I think, you know, for me above all, I learned how to, to sort of just live my life as guilt-free as I could, and knowing I'm not going to be a rock star in every facet of my life, but that's mm -hmm. okay. I will miss things. I remember flying to Shanghai the mm -hmm. morning of my son's fifth birthday for a Global Network Week. Yeah. He doesn't remember that. Right. You know, that's I did right. stay up, to be fair, I stayed up till 3 mm -hmm. on the night before painting his right. wall with mermaids and rainbows and all of his favorite there things, you go. which, you know, now he likes Pokemon, so that was really not worth it. Um, <laughs> but you just, you figure it out. You know, you, you can do it. I think women are strong and resilient and, you know, they're ultimate multitaskers. So it's I possible. Couldn't agree with you more. As a working mom myself, I also felt that, you know what? It had to come to a point where I realized that I could not be the best at everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And you exactly. learn to prioritize and you learn to really feel good about what you do do and not about what you don't focus mm -hmm. on. So that's right. Now, speaking of commitments, mm -hmm. uh, Tianli, you mm -hmm. had delivered a healthy baby boy while you were uh, in the program. Can you tell us about that experience? Yes, sure. So, yeah, that's that's a really great experience. But when I first uh, figured <laughs> out, so so we, we're all, you know, pretty ambitious ladies, but I was not, like, crazy enough to plan on this. So that pregnancy <laughs> was an uh, accident. And I actually figured out for the first week when we had this, like, you know, the July boot camps, sure. like the third day or fourth day. So I was really shocked. So I, because this baby was not planned, and this, and he came really at this very dramatic time. For the first, I, th I think, f a few months, I was very depressed, just you know, like depressed, oh. and didn't want to talk about that. My family didn't even want to, kind of you know, talk with me. But now coming, you know, facing back, I was really feel like very lucky. So the life actually gave gave me this opportunity, and actually I successfully went through. Not only it made me much more confident, feel like now I can probably for any difficulty I can con conquer it. Yes. But also I feel the whole process is not just about me. It's a, actually I was surrounded by all the love and the support. Mm -hmm. So going back to the you know these two years, so the support from my husband that's very that's very important. I think the family support is number one. They can really you know it's um, it's definitely positive positive to help you go through. Also for the school, I think it's really supportive. When I 
I remember when you know when the time I tell this and told this news to the to Johanna, she was really cool about it. She was like, not like oh, she's like oh, congratulations, you can go through it. But they don't. The school didn't give me any pressure. Basically, if you want to delay, you can delay. However, if they they think they think I can totally conquer it. So I didn't say I have to do something. I just say let me see how much I can do. And end up I didn't delay it.、Uh, the school allowed me to use the extended room、uh, whenever I could, especially when I was pregnant and the,、sure. the first two months I gave birth, which is really really helpful. And my team, they are also very supporting supporting me.、Uh, when the time I just gave birth, I think that's the very hardest because you really have to be involved with the with the newborn baby. So they try to do as much as they could and bring me up. So I think. At this point,、uh, facing back, I think just、uh, not only I learned so much by myself, and also I realized I really appreciate all the people who supported me to go through this、um, this process. You're a superwoman. You are yes, an inspiration.、Indeed. She didn't miss a beat. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think that is just fabulous. But also what you've just said, it's about it's not only that familial support, but also the school support was very important. So speaking of,、um, we talked about family. But we can't forget that we were also holding leadership positions when we were going through the program, right? So、uh, let's talk a little bit about that because you know, employer support is just critical to our success、uh, in the program. So let's talk,、uh, Claudine, Lauren.、Uh, let's talk a little bit about what was the, your employer support like, and how did it manifest itself? Should I go? Okay.、Um, Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, personally, there, I don't think there's a lot of designers that do pursue an MBA. So、um, there was certainly a little bit at first of perhaps not completely being able to envision how I was going to apply the, you know, the learnings on my day-to-day -day job.、Uh, but I definitely felt extremely supported by the company、uh, and my boss.、Um, otherwise, I think it would have been a very difficult thing to do. Um, and and you know I you know I think I think little little by little、uh, as I was going through the the process of adapting and adapting also in the workplace、mm -hmm. and how to manage the work with you know with the program being added to the the schedule,、um, I think people kind of like understood that I was also doing that to become、uh, as I mentioned a better manager and better at whatever I was doing at the time.、Um, so so from that standpoint, it, it made sense.、Um, And I think I think eventually what it what it really became is、uh, having the right communication and setting the expectations.、Sure. Uh, you can't、yeah. prevent emergencies from happening.、Um, you know, you certainly have sometimes while you you know on campus to have to manage certain things that are pressing.、Uh, but I always felt like there was again an understanding and a respect as long as you know I was communi communicating my schedule and what I could handle.、Uh, so from that standpoint, you know, I feel like I was really lucky. But I'm sure that all of us had to. Kind of handle these moments、mm -hmm. uh, and step out of the classroom, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah.、Um, but you know, again, once you get comfortable with that kind of you know setup,、um, yeah. it becomes a, a doable thing between you know your employer and and,、mm -hmm. and you. Right. Right. I would agree. I th I think you know I was really lucky to have a supportive boss.、Mm -hmm. He encouraged me,、um, uh, you know, inspired me to this program, and was very understanding of the value of an education from. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I think, and we we worked together for a couple years. So I, you know, I'd earned his trust. I think he knew that you know I would continue to do my job and deliver.、Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I you you find the time. You know, we would have class here on Fridays until five thirty, and then I would go back to the room, and you know,、yeah. I'd be responding to all the emails. And as Claudine said, there were times where I had to pop out to take a、mm -hmm. call. Um, because something couldn't wait, and I think the professors, you know, largely are understanding of that because they、mm -hmm. understand that we have full-time jobs outside of you know this building,、um, and, and you know I think the the amount of support I actually got from NBC Universal and from my boss and from my team, frankly, because、mm -hmm. um, I relied on them to、mm -hmm. sort of keep the of ship afloat when I was、right. up here every other weekend.、Um, I, it was really I'll never forget it. I, I'm forever indebted to to them for their support and encouragement throughout this process. Let's talk a little bit about leadership. So I'm sure we all know the statistics about I think four percent of C-suite roles are held by women,、uh, and then there's yeah, and this is at Fortune 500 companies,、uh, obviously. But、um, we have the women's movement. We have Me Too.
So we have a lot of going on that really necessitates different types of leadership, right? It's, it's an evolving skill. So it's not you become a leader one day and then you, know, you, you stick in that mold. So it really has, you have to grow into the role. So uh, as leaders, we're constantly navigating different issues that pop up. So let's talk a little bit about how the program has shaped your response to leadership challenges that you may face. Uh, Tinley, do you want to tell us? Sure. So originally I came from China. So I, I actually finished my uh, college and then came here for graduate school. Mm -hmm. And then for the past four and five years, I was working and I'm, I'm working for the Asian companies. I was wor working for a Chinese pharmaceutical company. Now I'm working for a Japanese pharmaceutical company. And the, both of them actually are very traditional uh, Asian type of uh, companies. So talking about uh, you know, the women leadership, uh, I can tell you those, both companies are very male dominant. Um, so before I joined the program, I had a lot of, actually I struggled a lot about the leadership. Although sometimes I feel like I'm very confident about what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but uh, being a conservative, I think, uh, you know, female professional in the companies, uh, I tend to actually being like hiding that, not trying to expose everything I, I you know, I, I know, or mm -hmm. trying to understand the so-called level. So mm -hmm. sometimes I feel you know, the, the, the unfairness in the company, the structure. Sure. For example, in the Chinese company, I think uh, in the director above, uh, I think that uh, the leadership program, uh, there's really just probably like one or two women. They're all men. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, when you join that, uh, you know, in the, in the, when you went to the meeting and the, you constantly will be assumed as uh, assistant or something, you know, just, yeah. so all of this. And then after the program, I think the, mm, the biggest change for me is I become very confident. And I understood, mm -hmm. actually there's one class really helped me and during the leadership class, uh, the teacher asked us to, to, to think what exactly you wanted but you haven't done and what is the reason uh, you didn't do it. Sure. And then during the, the, the thinking process, I realized you know, my problem. Uh, so right now, I think I'm much more uh, confident and more proactively to actually to take the lead in the project, also to take leadership in managing the group. So for example, just uh, you know, right, before, um, right before our graduation, uh, it is for the Japanese company is our fiscal year ending. So we have this performance writing and also pursuing for the next so, like a goal. I'm really like for the first time I just told them, like I'm so ready to actually train other people and I can share my experience with the junior people. And uh, you know surprisingly it was uh, I think uh, accepted and agreed with, with my supervisor. So this I think this is really good first step in a very uh, traditional uh, pharmaceutical company in Japan. Sure. Yeah. So it's a great story. What about you, Lauren? You know, I think there are a couple courses we take here where they mm -hmm. teach you specific ways of dealing with conflict um, uh, and, and, and different sort of leadership tools and techniques mm -hmm. that, that I found to be very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, I think overall it has increased my patience um, and, and actually instilled some empathy in me when it comes mm. to, to leading a team and trying mm -hmm. to be a little bit more understanding of different points of view. And, and I do credit um, one professor in particular for, for helping me get there. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, outside of the classroom and particularly when it comes to the learning teams, we're all assigned, as you know, to these learning teams, mm -hmm. mine was such a diverse group of people, mm -hmm. different backgrounds, different professions, there were engineers, there was an orthopedic surgeon, there was a PhD mm -hmm. in chemistry, and never before in my life, in my career, have I been around people from such different walks of life, sure. professionally, geographically. Mm -hmm. So I think that really helped me learn how to sort of navigate different personalities yeah. um, and to, to manage different ways of tackling and approaching a project um, that were very different from what I'm accustomed to. So mm -hmm. it sort of you know, I broke out of my media silo and, and had to work with, yeah. with people that I, I don't typically work with on a day-to-day -day, um, basis. So I, I think it has just made me um, uh, a better, well-rounded leader and, and able mm -hmm. to work with a variety of people in a way that I just hadn't before. Just listening to the two of you, it's, I think when we go into the program, we don't 
we don't think that that's something that's going mm -hmm. to happen. We don't really plan. We plan on picking up the, the skills and the, you know, the, the, the tools, the frameworks. But when it comes to really navigating, working with people, I, I just, I, I agree with you completely. It's something, it's such a benefit, but it's not something we go in planning that right. we're, that's going right. to happen. Now, what about you, Claudine? How did the program shape you personally? Um, it's a tough one because I feel also you kind of progress throughout the program and you pick up on different things at different times. Sure. Um, but if I, if I had to sum it up, I think for me to become a responsible entrepreneur was definitely, you know, how it's the program has shaped me in the most uh, impactful way. Um, I knew that I wanted, you know, to start my business. Um, you know, I kind of had, a, again, the vision for it. Um, but I, I think because of the mission, the network, uh, the infrastructure that we have here, uh, and quite honestly, gave me a ton of momentum. Um, you know, I didn't think that midway through the program, I would, you know, feel in me the kind of just, again, the, it just accelerated the process for me. Um, so obviously, as you were mentioning, like the tools and the frameworks and all that are very important, but, you know, especially the, again, the ecosystem that you are able to kind of just grow within uh, was for a lot in that. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I, again, I think, most of us, I believe, uh, were embracing the school's mission. Um, and that was, that was big for me to be able to focus in creating improvements in the healthcare space and doing that in an environment that would not only inspire me, um, but motivate me and, and really kind of guide me in that process. So th that aspect of me just changing from a professional standpoint uh, was definitely big. So I want to thank our panelists for sharing these insights with us both about how they approach the decision-making about going to grad school, but also about how the program has really shaped their lives and uh, both professionally and personally. So we wish them lots of luck as you continue to grow both professionally and personally and just really continue to increase your capacity, right? Both uh, in your, uh, fam with your families and also at work and your leadership uh, skills as well. So um, as a parting thought, why don't we um, talk about if you had one thing to say to a woman who was thinking about graduate school and just, you know, is really grappling with uh, the decision, what would you say to uh, the woman? Claudine, do you want to go, can you go this sure. way? Sure. Um, I think, I think it's very easy to kind of, you know, start the program if you like have a, a bit of the vision of the diploma in front of you and kind of going for it, right? And it feels great. I'm, you know, all of us feel, you know, fabulous about having graduated recently. Um, but if I had one piece of advice would be really enjoy the process. Um, and it is, a, you know, a very, very, very supportive infrastructure and again, system. Uh, and it's easy to kind of miss the interactions with, you know, the, the students and the faculty and, and really being able to create those relationships that are truly long term. Um, so, yes, the diploma is important and there's definitely work to do, you know, for you to get to that. Uh, but don't don't kind of forget uh, and dismiss the, the richness really of the experience throughout, because uh, looking back on it, um, that was certainly the highlight for me to be able to kind of enjoy those moments. Um, so that'd be mine. So for me, I feel like, you know, uh, looking back the two years, it's not really easy. And I think for everybody, it's not easy. So it's, it's like you're climbing, a, you know, a mountain. Um, so for me, um, I think one of my, I think, important lesson I learned is if it is so hard, there are so many obstacles in front of you, just ignore that so many things. And look at the priority, the first step. You, you, you solve the problem one, one by one. And every time when you just, you know, uh, jump out of the one barrier, you feel better and you're closer to the aim. So I think this is for also, you know, probably feeding for the career. So sometimes you have very high goal and the, the path is very complicated, not easy, mm -hmm. but you just, uh, small steps, it will, you will get there. Sure. Just be patient. Good advice. Um, I think if, if you're considering applying, um, if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence, my advice would be to make a list two columns, mm. all the reasons you don't think you should do it and all the reasons you think you should. Mm -hmm. And then, and I'm looking to you to back me up on this, and then I, you take that list <laughs> and you take all the reasons you shouldn't do it and cut it in half because I guarantee it's, I don't have mm. the time, I have sure. family commitments, yeah. 
you'll figure it out, you can do it. Wow. And then I would take the list of reasons you should do it and double it because you'll get so much more out of this program than you ever thought you would, things that you're not even thinking about when you apply. And trust yeah. us, because we just finished, and, and I think that Claudine and, and Tina would agree. Well, and I would agree, too, being just uh, an, a, one year out. And um, I really do want to echo what Claudine said. It's really about enjoying the process, because we come here, and we're so focused on doing well, because we that's what's expected of us, but really enjoying the Yale community and embracing what the program has to offer, that's, we can't overstate that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.